All right, how's it going, everyone? John here, Feldman Physical Therapy and Performance. Got my fuzzy sidekick Lincoln here, uh, but let's be honest, he's just here for clickbait, so you guys will uh, want to watch the video a little bit more than looking at my ugly mug. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about muscle forces during running, uh, which muscles contribute how much towards the entire running process, how much work your muscles have to do to get your butt from point A to point B, right? So that's going to be the breakdown here. We're going to compare some, uh, some muscle groups to kind of really highlight you know, where you should spend some of your extra efforts uh, when it comes to strength training. Because if there's one thing that runners should do in addition to running, it's strength training, especially over a certain age. So, um, you know, we'll definitely talk about it at the end when we wrap up, we'll highlight which muscle group is responsible for the lion's share of the work in comparison to, uh, to some of the other muscle groups in the lower leg. Uh, you know, but for now, we'll, uh, we'll get going with the meat of everything. And uh, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you don't mind hitting that like button, subscribe, um, or even just sharing the video with your friends, tell them that, you know, we put out great content, the jokes are good, or at the very least, we include our pets. So, you know, we're kind of bribing you guys to watch. So uh, whatever it might be, uh, we really love it if you, uh, if you subscribe and hit like, um, and then let us know what content you guys want to see. So without further ado, uh, we're going to get into it. So let's start breaking down the muscle groups uh, below the waist. And if you forgive me, I'm not the math teacher. That's my wife. You know, I'm not that great with numbers. So um, as much as I would love to impress you with my knowledge and recall right off the bat, um, I'm just going to be referring to the study that's up here on my, uh, on my computer uh, when it comes to talking about which muscle groups are uh, responsible for how much work. So when we talk about how much work these muscles are going to be doing, what we're really talking about is relation to your body weight. How much force do those muscles have to produce when compared to your body weight? All right, so we're going to say, uh, you know, two times the amount of body weight, three times the amount of body weight, or one and a half to two and a half, you know, up to six, whatever it might be. So when you hear me say those numbers, uh, it's a reference to how much work those muscles are doing, how much force they're producing in terms of your body weight, right? So if somebody weighs 100 pounds, you know, and the muscle's doing, you know, twice the amount of work, it's obviously doing 200, um, you know, pounds of force. So people much smarter than us were able to break these down uh, and take a look at the muscles with surface electrodes, uh, you know, force plates, and things like that. So when looking at runners at a steady state pace, right, we're not talking about sprinting and explosive movements, we're talking about steady state running, um, we're going to talk about the glutes first, right? So the glute, the booty, the butt muscle, right, how much work is that muscle doing to propel you forward, right? Well, according to the numbers, the glute max does one and a half to almost three times your body weight and force production just to get you from point A to point B while running, all right? So uh, that's the butt. The butt does one and a half up to almost three times the amount of body weight and work. Going a little bit more to the side, the glute medius responsible for stabilizing the hips and the pelvis. Um, you know, we talk about this a lot with our runners that come in, you know, in relation to how it affects um, the hip, the knee, even the low back, right? Uh, the glute medius is actually going to be doing uh, almost two and a half to three and a half times the amount of work in comparison to your body weight, all right? So just to stabilize when your foot hits that ground. We'll go a little bit lower um, into the back. Let's get to the hammies. Um, hammies, you know, starting around two, it can get up to nine times your body weight, um, you know, but again, a lot of that comes in braking power um, and a little bit of propulsion. So, um, you know, that's going to represent uh, how much work your hamstrings is doing, right? And some people kind of look at that and say, wow, that's, that's kind of wild. Um, but then when we go to the front, the quads, right? We look at, you know, big, powerful muscle group. We think that this and the butt are going to be doing a lot of work. Your quads are actually going to be responsible for four to six times the amount of force production in comparison to your body weight, right? So four to six times your body weight and force production, again, gets you from point A to point B while you're doing some steady state running. You go out there for a jog, you know, no surprise, man, my, you know, my quads are, are quite sore. So then let's go a little bit lower. Let's go uh, to the muscle group in the calf complex, right? It's actually made up of two muscles. I've done some work on this in the past. I've thrown up some videos and strength training videos, um, some blog posts where I break it down. So um, if you're a little bit more interested in that breakdown, definitely search um, gastroc and soleus, calf muscle complex, and, um, you know, in our blogs on our website or even in the, um, you know, in our YouTube channel. So uh, you'll definitely have some content from me up there. Um, but ultimately, the two muscles in the calf complex are the gastroc and the soleus, right? Gastroc is going to be the bigger one up top. Um, the soleus muscle is going to be the one that's a little bit deeper to that and much lower uh, in your calf, closer towards your heel, and that you know, dives right into the Achilles. So both of those muscle groups are going to be responsible for helping you point your toes um, you know, when it comes to plantar flexion um, or in propelling you forward. Right. So here are the numbers for the muscles in the calf complex. Your gastroc does about two and a half to three times the amount of force production compared to your body weight. All right. Um, we see a lot more force production in sprinters because the gastroc is going to be one of the prime muscles of propulsion in sprinting where you're doing, you know, rapid knee extension, um, you know, we're straightening your knee in comparison or in conjunction with 
plantar flexion, um, you know, it's actually injury to the, uh, the gas rock is going to be known as tennis leg. That's kind of the common term that's thrown around because a lot of tennis players will suffer uh, strains there because of that rapid knee extension combined with plantar flexion or pointing your toes, right? So the gas rock is going to be two and a half to three times the amount of body weight force produced. Now we'll go a little bit lower to your soleus. Six and a half to eight times the amount of body weight and force production. Okay, let's let that sink in for a second. This muscle group that a lot of people have never even heard of in the lower leg closest to your foot is going to be responsible for six and a half to eight times the amount of body weight and force production, right? That's just pretty wild to us, right? It was wild when we first heard it. It was counterintuitive. We didn't expect it, you know, but upon further research and learning a little bit more, it actually makes a lot of sense. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the big take home message here when we look at everything, right? Glute max, one and a half to 2.8 2 or three, all right? Glute med, two and a half to three and a half four to six, okay, in your quads, hamstring is going to be two to nine, gastroc two and a half to three, but your sole is six and a half to eight times, right? Six and a half is the minimum. That's what that represents, okay? So in comparison with all the other muscles that we talked about in the lower limb, the soleus is doing the lion's share of the work. You know, that's the real workhorse there, all right? So um, that was pretty shocking to us. Um, you know, the research also shows that over the age of 35, um, you know, just physiologically, your connective tissue changes in ways that it doesn't, you know, below that age and, you know, a rapid, um, you know, degeneration of tissues in the lower leg are responsible for atrophy in the calf complex. And uh, from other research that we've seen, the calf complex is the muscle group that atrophies the quickest as we age. I think that's one of the reasons why older people have a gait or walking pattern that's characterized by short steps and shuffling. They just lack the ability to push off and, um, you know, get those toes to produce a lot more force into the ground. So therefore, they take a shorter step. You know, but ultimately what that means for us as recreational runners is we have to prioritize strain training, but we have to do it in a meaningful way, right? There has to be some intelligent design behind how we're structuring our strength training, right? So not only are we eating, sleeping, and training, we're eating, sleeping, training, and strength training as well. You know, that's, that's a forgotten about component for a lot of people after a certain age when we become recreational, um, even competitively, but still recreational runners uh, in our adult life. So I think it's really, really important to highlight these areas, um, those areas that are responsible for a lot of work. We need to kind of focus a lot of energy there as well. Um, and so the take home for this is, wow, I think we need to start training our calves a lot more. And that's a notion that we're trying to get to a lot of our clients that walk in the doors, whether they're runners or not, right? Because when it comes to running, very, very important. You know, they, they have a strong contribution to the, to the activity. But even just regular life, if that's a, a muscle group that atrophies the quickest as we get older, um, we want to make sure we maintain strength there as much as possible and you know, maintain good, powerful muscle fibers um, you know, for what they're, they're supposed to do for us. So that's, uh, that's our little comparison video for today, guys, is you know, in terms of running from the waist down, which muscles are responsible for how much work, okay? And if we take a look at it, um, even though the quads and the glutes are the you know, seemingly largest, most powerful muscles in the lower body, uh, when it comes to running, listen, glute max, one and a half at the minimum, quads, four at the minimum, but your soleus muscle, six and a half times your body weight and force production, right? So uh, we'll try and find that study and throw it up for you guys to see if you really want, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of great work has been coming out over the past few years when it comes to running. So, you know, our job is to just kind of digest it all and then repackage it and, uh, you know, give it to you. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're not the ones that have done the research. We're just the ones that are kind of sifting through it all and seeing how do our clients benefit the most from it and what is it actually telling us, right? Fitness, health, very dynamic. A lot of things are changing and a lot more research is coming out year after year. And especially when it comes to running, a lot more work uh, and efforts being put into uh, that running population. And so it's it's awesome for us. It's, it's brilliant work that's coming out. So uh, we have a good time getting that information to you. Uh, plus it just makes us look really good, so. Take that for what it is. Um, but that's it, guys. Uh, that's a little recap. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, you know, I think my question for you guys right now is if you've had any injuries while running, you know, let us know. Where, where do you tend to sustain the most injuries? Um, anybody feel like their calves are weak? Do you like strength training your calves, right? And if you do, you know, throw up some of your favorite exercises. Uh, you know, we, we definitely want to know. But, you know, that's it. You know, a little, uh, little research review for you today, giving you the information, um, you know, that we found. So we hope you enjoyed it. Again, you know, give us a like, give us a subscribe, um, you know, and, and let us know your thoughts on the matter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Happy training.